The Historic City of Bath Situated in the southwest of England, the city of Bath is renowned throughout the world for its Georgian architecture and natural hot springs. The city's history is rich and varied, but it's the Roman occupation of the city, which they named Aquasulis, that stirs the imagination of hundreds of tourists that flock to the city each and every year. In 1987, the city of Bath was awarded World Heritage status, and it isn't difficult to see why. Simply take a look at just a small selection of the architectural wonders that the city has to offer. The Royal Crescent, for example. Pulteney Bridge, or Bath Bus Station, which was recently honoured by His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. In spite of these and other stunning buildings, such as Sally Lund's Tea Rooms, there is still another magnificent structure that stands out as the city's crowning glory. That structure is Bath Abbey. The history of this magnificent building has been well documented. However, this film will not be focusing on the easily accessible history of the Abbey, but instead we have endeavoured to unearth some of the events in the Abbey's past, which until now, have remained forgotten secrets. As you can probably imagine, the research for this film was a long and extensive process. It was surprising to find, however, just how much information the Bath City Library had hidden away in its dustiest volumes. By pulling together our finds from these paper archives, as well as discoveries from our crack team of microfilm specialists, we have whittled our discoveries down to the top five most interesting secrets from the Abbey's past. The construction of Bath Abbey as it appears today began in the year 1499 under the order of the Bishop of Bath and Wells, Oliver King. Before the current abbey was built, a grand cathedral stood on the same site. This cathedral was actually larger in scale than today's abbey and was completed at some time around the year 1156. When Oliver King became the Bishop of Bath and Wells in 1496, he was shocked to find the Cathedral of Bath close to ruin. The newly appointed bishop spent a year pondering what to do about the decaying building, and toyed with the idea of building an entirely new church on the site. Popular historical records claim that the bishop one night had a dream that finally convinced him to build a new church on the site. In this dream, Bishop King saw a ladder stretching up to heaven, with angels climbing and descending, and at the ladder's base, an olive tree with a crown hanging from its branches. To the bishop, the olive tree and crown were blatant symbolism of his own name, Oliver King, and as such he felt he was divinely chosen to rebuild the ruined cathedral. Construction on the abbey began in 1499, and wasn't completed until 1525. Unfortunately, Oliver King died in 1503, so he never got to see the finished abbey. As a mark to his memory, the images from his dream were incorporated into the design of the abbey frontage. With its many and varied decorative carvings, the magnificent abbey frontage is still a hugely impressive sight to this day. Of all the splendid and elaborate decoration, it is the twin ladders of ascending and descending angels that have always held the most fascination for visitors to the abbey. The story of the bishop's dream is still told today, and is usually presented as historic fact. Even local museums carry the story as part of their exhibits. However, despite the story being accurate to a certain extent, it is a little known fact that the whole tale is never revealed. The truth of the matter is that the original story came to light more than a century after Oliver King's death. Original transcripts of Bishop King's diary tell of the dream also containing images of the olive tree burning to the ground, and the crown falling from the branches and rolling into a lake. In fact, in light of the whole story, Bishop King seems to have decided to build the new abbey despite having the dream, which was actually full of bad omens of impending failure. Perhaps Bishop King's death in 1503 was fate exacting its revenge on him for acting against doom-laden premonitions he had been shown in his prophetic dream. Some may scoff at such a superstitious suggestion, but was it really a coincidence that just a few short years after the abbey was completed, Henry VIII began the dissolution of the monasteries in 1539? 
The property of all monastic institutions throughout the country was confiscated, and Bath Abbey was no exception. The abbey was stripped of everything of value, even its lead roofing. Once again, another magnificent church on this site was left to fall into ruin. Wartime Britain, 1942. Bombing raids over England were commonplace and had become part of a terrifying and arduous daily wartime routine. The city of Bath, with its rich history and lack of military installations, had been classified as one of a small number of national safe havens. Because of Bath's apparent safety, the city was chosen for a very special purpose, which aimed to raise national morale and in turn help the war effort. In January of 1942, the English government's Minister for Supply, Lord Beaverbrook, was given the task of relocating Britain's most treasured item to the safety of the city of Bath. After much debate and argument in the House of Commons, the item that was deemed to be most influential to national morale was finalised on the 28th of January 1942. The final decision was that the steam locomotive, the Flying Scotsman, was the single most important source of national pride, and therefore critical to keeping national morale stable. It was thought that if the Flying Scotsman were to be destroyed in a bombing raid, it would cause national panic and destabilise the war effort. On April the 22nd, 1942, the Flying Scotsman arrived in the city of Bath and preparations were made to house the locomotive within the confines of Bath Abbey. The Abbey had been deemed the safest place in the city and was also thought to be far from the gaze of the Nazi eye. On the 23rd of April 1942, one publicity photograph was taken of the event and was to be published in national newspapers to boost the morale of the nation. At around this time, the British Air Force had been conducting bombing raids on the historic German city of Lübeck. The Allied forces had been under the impression that the city was harbouring troops preparing for an assault on the Russian front. Damage to the historic city of Lübeck was severe, and the city's cathedral and main churches were destroyed. Under Hitler's instruction, the German Luftwaffe retaliated with a series of air raids. The historic English cities of Exeter, York, Norwich and Bath were chosen as targets. The only reasoning behind this choice of cities was that they all scored the maximum 4 star rating in the German tourist guides printed by the Baerdecker Company. Bath Abbey had suddenly become a prime bombing target. On the nights of April 25th and April 26th 1942, Bath was subject to two sustained and heavy bombing raids. A panicked government mobilised the swift and clumsy removal of the Flying Scotsman from Bath Abbey. In the rush to remove the locomotive, a priceless 17th century leather glove was irreparably damaged. The publicity photograph was never published, but the Abbey was subsequently employed for storage of another kind. It was decided that the Abbey was ideally suited to the stockpiling of food supplies on a massive scale, and by June 1942, the Abbey was primarily storing several tons of beef dripping and suet. <laughs> 